Hello everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing very well. Um, it's been a little while since I made one of these videos and I've been going back and forth in my head for quite a while over whether to go ahead with this one but at the end of the day I think it's it's very important to me to get this out there a bit. Yeah, this, this is a video about grief and dealing with grief. It's not really something that's talked about very much. It relates a lot to mental health. Often people don't treat them both in the same breath, or at least in my mind, I don't think of grief as something that's directly related to the other mental health problems in my life. Quite possibly because grief is likely to happen to everyone. Everyone's likely to experience it. It's a universal thing that happens. It's a very, very tough thing to talk about. I think it's difficult because it's a very personal thing and you're often talking about someone else and it's a very personal thing for them too and it's it's very tough to, to know where the line is but in the end the reason I make these videos is to hopefully help other people who are having similar thought processes to me and help myself a lot and get things off my chest. In the background you should be seeing the wonderful Great Orm on WRC9, the Rally Championship game. Um, the Great Orm is actually, for those of you who don't know and don't know me in person, is quite close to where I live. It's about a 40-50 minute drive away by car and they hold a rally stage there pretty much pretty much every year when the, the rally comes to Wales, so that's pretty cool that it's on the on the video game as well. My friends were joking that um, it connects to a forest on the game sometimes and there's no forest on top of the Great Orm, but um, we'll look past that. So if you, if you see me in the background, absolutely thumping my friends at WRC9, then you know what's going on. It's a pretty good, pretty good hot lap, that one. It's not really a hot lap, it's a hot stage. Um, where to start? Oh gosh, it's a difficult line to know how much information to give away and I don't want to go too much into the personal elements of what happened. My nano, my grandmother passed away back in January and it's been tough, it's been tough for the whole family. It's extra tough seeing the rest of my family have a difficult time of it. I feel like I'm a very empathetic person. I take other people's emotions a lot and kind of live off of those. So when everyone's feeling really sad, I really feel it too. I'm not always the best at expressing my emotions, but it's something I've been working on the last few years and I think I've done a pretty decent job of it. I've gotten better. My Nana, to start with, was a wonderful person and I've been thinking a lot about her in the last few months. I guess it happens with close family is that there's this thing you take from going forwards and that's what I'm trying to focus on, just I know that she was an incredibly kind person, more than anything, she's incredibly warm and loving and affectionate and I'm happy and proud to be trying to carry that on in her honour. I'd say it was a bit of a shock but it was kind of drawn out, drawn out over quite a long time. She first got ill last summer and that was completely out of the blue and it makes it extra difficult and with the pandemic happening at the same time I mean it makes some things extra complicated and extra hard because I didn't get to see her the last time I saw her was Christmas 2019 and that's really hard to accept I think everyone deals with with illness and their family in different ways and maybe my way of dealing with it would be to be by that person's side no matter what you know, there's a way of looking at it and saying you can be glad that you didn't have to see your grandmother like that at the end, but also I think for my own kind of acceptance of, of what's happened and for my own grieving process it would have been important, but to me now she's just gone so it's, it's a difficult one. I have actually been dreaming about her a lot too recently, and I was reading up that that's something people do when they're struggling to accept that someone's gone in their life. Um, which you know, makes sense under the circumstances. 
I think it's hard as well at the moment, not being able to see people in person. You know, if you're online talking to people, you're usually doing something else. In my case, gaming or Zoom meetings and things, there's not really too much of a chance to just chat to someone and catch up and mention what's been happening. And as support systems go for your mental health, that's a very, very difficult situation to be in. I can appreciate that a lot of people have probably felt that way in the pandemic. So it's been hard not, not being able to speak about it properly. And again, it gets down to different people dealing with grief in different ways and having different ways of processing things. That's the key word I was looking for before, processing. One thing I'd say about the pandemic is that when I went into it, I was kind of able to deal with it a lot better at the start and I was starting to get a bit overwhelmed with certain things that are happening in my life and it was a nice break from that for a bit and because I was so geared up in my head on how to deal with my mental health, I could adapt a bit better. I just kind of felt like I'd faced this challenge before, like I'd been stuck at home a lot of my teenage years and stuff like that, so it didn't really feel too different. So I'd say for the first couple of months, it was alright, I quite enjoyed it, I kept myself busy, I found plenty of things to do that I didn't have time for before as well. But then the longer it goes on, it becomes more difficult obviously, and over the winter especially, when you can't go outside and get fresh air as much without... I was going to say freezing your tits off, but that's a bit rude for this video. That was the first thing my mind went to. It's probably not a good good idea. Um, yeah, it's not, not possible to go outside without getting hypothermia. It's not possible to go outside without freezing to death. Um, yeah. It isn't possible to go outside without getting cold. And that's really not ideal. And there's a lot less daylight, which really affects me as well. I've always been someone who kind of... Um, it's more productive at later hours in the day, so I find myself staying awake quite late. And that's not not really kind of complementary to the winter. So, it's a tricky thing for sure. And then, with my nana passing away, in January, it was kind of... I guess it was the low point really. It was when my mental health and other areas were kind of at their worst because everything was so shit. Everything was um, it's very stressful. We lost our, our family cat a few years ago, and that's the only really ex big experience of grief I've had in a way up until now. And I guess that's a blessing in a way. I never knew either of my grandfathers. Losing my nana made me think about them a bit more too, because they're all in the same place now. You know, Ma makes my my granddad's feel more real. I've been told I'm very much like um, my mum's dad, so my nana's husband. My mum sees things in me that she saw in him a lot of the time. And that's it's very touching. They get to carry on his legacy in a way, even though I never met him. I know I would have been really good friends with them. And it makes it hurt a lot that I missed out on that chance. So yeah, with, with my cat, the biggest thing I remember feeling was being unable to help, seeing someone suffering and being un unable to help them and I felt the same way again. It's not a nice feeling being out of control, being powerless to help someone. I'd say the, the grief from losing my cat, it still lasts to today in a lot of ways and I don't think I fully kind of, I didn't expect it to be that strong but also I didn't realise I hadn't fully gotten over it for a couple of years and I hadn't really had the chance to speak to someone about it and I still haven't properly in a lot of ways. It's difficult when different people don't don't want the process something in the same way or you know understandably get upset about talking about this kind of thing. And for me, I get upset but I still feel like it's important for my brain to just relieve some of that tension, some of those thoughts that are going on. And I feel the same way about this. So yeah. I don't want to make this video too long, but the thing I want to kind of reinforce for everyone watching is grief is a very tough thing and it happens in a lot of different ways. There's no right or wrong. If you're feeling a certain way, it's completely valid. And it's a very tough thing to kind of heal from. 
because you don't always get the opportunity that you need to speak to someone in the right way. I'm kind of hesitant of just bringing it up to random people in my life, partially because this might be a very self-centered view, but I don't want them to think that I'm just throwing it out in the open casually to look for sympathy or kind of draw attention to myself for being sad. I also don't want to upset them. I don't want to just bring it up and completely tone down the conversation we're having and make them feel sad for the rest of the day. But at the same time, sadness is a very important feeling. It's not good to try and run from it. You can say you want a happy life, but the happiest lives usually have a lot of sadness in them. It's a balance. You know, it's impossible to be happy constantly. I'm not entirely sure where the future will take me with this and how how these feelings will develop. I still feel a lot of pain, but I'm sure that's only normal. So I, I just want to encourage those watching to try their best to reach out to people. You know, I think different people will have different levels of where they can reach and how well they can express themselves and how well they want to. But if you're feeling, if you're struggling with something like this, it's important to still share that those emotions you're feeling with other people and it will it will help you in the long run and at the end of the day that's that's the most important thing that's um, you gotta put yourself first in that sense I guess it's the one thing you can guarantee if you can talk to someone about how you've been feeling it will help in some way just getting it off your chest that is better than doing nothing that is making progress and healing and that's the most important thing you know we can take that guarantee no matter what it's difficult because you can't control other people in life you can't make them talk back to you a certain way you can't help them ease them from feeling pain if they're grieving you can't you can't always find someone who will completely understand your complex situation in your mind but you can do your best and that's that's the most important thing so yeah so went on a bit of a happy note. Um, one of the things that's been passed along to me to keep from my nana is um, a little soft toy cat. And she got it from a friend who visited Germany and brought it back with her as a present. And she named it Jürgen after Jürgen Klopp, the football manager of Liverpool FC. And they thought that was quite funny. It's a pretty hilarious name for a cat, to be honest. So Jürgen the cat now lives with me. And I'll end on a quote from Jürgen Klopp. It's not a direct quote, but it's more or less there. We don't do things and work hard because we're guaranteed to get the results we want. It's just not the way it works. Instead, we work hard because it's the best and only chance we have. It's always worth trying. The benefits will be massively worth it in the end. It just reinforces the idea that it's important to take things in your stride and do your best no matter what. If you have any thoughts on this video, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll happily read through them. I really hope this video helps in some small way for people who maybe have very recently been affected by grief. There's a lot of services out there that will help you if you're struggling. I think the, the shock is the biggest thing, you know, at first especially. It makes everyone and everything in your life feel very mortal yourself included, but it's a chance for, for growing too, you know, it's a chance to grow as a person, to kind of come to terms with that fact a little bit, that life is short. Anyway, I feel like I've run for a while, I hope you can take something from this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon, much love.